This video will cover what a phage biology consists of. Uh, the main features that we will discuss are the structure, genome, infection, replication, the assembly and how it extrudes from the infected cells. There will be even more uh, discussion uh, based on how phages display themselves and library types and you can check the uh, related videos for that if you would like. So we begin by describing what a phage is. A phage is a virus of a bacterium which is composed of a uh, few simple units and they may be of multiple uh, types. So we have filamentous, tailed, polyhedral. For the purpose of this presentation, we focus on the filamentous phages, that is the FF phage. It is a flexible rod. It may be as big as 6.5 nanometers in diameter and about two micrometers in length. It is continuously extruded from an infected cell. So it can cause a retarded growth, but it does not really lyse the cell. It has a genome that is composed of a single stranded circular DNA. So we basically now want to see what it is composed of. And there are a few basic features. It has a coat protein, a coat protein gene, and a polypeptide which is expressed outside the cell, outside the phage uh, membrane. So the pro coat protein itself is something that can be uh, seen inside the figure over here and it is uh, coded by the coat protein gene. We can, of course, uh, try to insert our uh, heterologous gene that we want to recombine uh, in its place. And we can, so this portion itself will be called a fused reading frame. And the protein that is expressed outside of the phage is going to be called heterologous polypeptide. So that is a fused protein. Uh, in the further slides that um, in the further slides that we cover, we will see how these things are expressed and how genotype affects the phenotype, and how the self-replicating system itself works and displays the polypeptide outside and how it, we can use it. The basic genome structure that is uh, within the circular DNA is um, composed of these. Uh, four units. First, intergenic region. It consists of the packaging signal and the origin of replication. So both of these units are important because packaging signal is something that will tell the phage later on that it is time for you to mature and get extruded from the cell. The origin of replication is something that uh, inside the E. coli, it helps to integrate as well as start replicating it. Then we have the DNA replicating genes. Uh, so these are the genes that are uh, or home homekeeping genes, so they need to be uh, replicated immediately for this phage to work properly. Then we have the structural genes, which are how the structure of the uh, phage will be composed. And lastly, we have the morphogenetic genes, which basically decide what the order of development will be inside the phage. It basically covers the coat protein, like in what order the coat proteins will be developed, say. We can now look at how the coat proteins actually help the phage to infect the cell, uh, the E. coli cell for our example. So we basically have a G3P protein that is expressed outside. And the, it is developed outside the phage and it has two units which are of crucial uh, essence for it to infect. So the units N1 and N2 help to dock the particular phage onto a pilus of the um, E. coli cell. Uh, an N2 uh, subunit uh, is going to con come in contact with the pilus of the E. coli and the N1 will be combining with a protein called Toll A, which is present in the periplasm of the E. coli. So the basic uh, essence of this thing is that we will be slowly and slowly taking the uh, entire phage within the uh, cytoplasm of the E. coli cell and the DNA inside it will be imported to the E. coli. So here is where we can start looking at how the replication is going to happen. So once the circular DNA has come inside the E. coli F plus cell, so F plus is basically a male E. coli cell which has the pilus, like a provision to extend and retract the pilus. So once we have the positive sense strand of our um, 
uh, phase within the E. coli, it starts to develop into a double-stranded DNA using the cell machinery of the E. coli and it goes into two processes simultaneously. It can go into transcription and it can go into replication. If it goes into transcription, it develops its mRNA which produces the proteins that it needs to form in order to make its coat or some other auxiliary proteins that it needs as part of its development and extrusion and the replicated double-stranded DNA starts to um, dissociate into single-stranded po positive single-strand DNA and pack inside the coat proteins. So this assembly happens and then the phage can ex um, extrude from the cell. Now, phages can be used as tools in molecular biology. Basically, we have the provision to use phages as vectors and as phage made or phase mid vectors. So when we talk about phage vectors, we try to incorporate the gene of our interest plus uh, um, into the origin of replication of the phage within the phage circular DNA. What this helps us to do is that in the heterogenic region of the phage uh, circular DNA, we can incorporate the gene of our interest in the multiple cloning site. So we precisely know at what location we are putting our particular gene of interest. And then we can uh, allow the phage to clone and uh, culture, and then we can uh, apply or do whatever application we want with it. On top of this, we have phage mate vectors. Now, phage mate vector is uh, in simple terms a plasmid that is also a phage so what this means is that you have a phage circular dna but in place of not like in place but in addition to having an origin of replication for the phage we also have an origin of replication for the plasmid and what this helps us to do is that we cannot incorporate the gene of interest that we want into the phage mid dna and also incorporate the packaging signal along with the origin of replication for the phage. So in simple terms, what is happening is that we have a circular DNA and we are telling it that once you are replicating, you can allow yourself to signal that you are mature uh, and ready to uh, extrude from the cell because that is what the packaging signal is responsible for in the phage. It tells the uh, E. coli cell that I want to leave. So you can uh, allow this phage mid uh, um, circular DNA to replicate and then uh, transcribe uh, whatever proteins it requires to move out. However, we do not have the uh, provision of providing uh, the coat protein genes inside this. So we add a phage called a helper phage, which works in conjunction. Uh, I mean, so it works simultaneously with phage mate to produce the particular coat proteins that we want in order to allow this phage mate to extrude from the cell. And this can help us to um, create multiple phage mate vectors from a single E. coli cell.